to my channel. Today is a tech tutorial on setting up Google Forms for your students. So first we need to start with a form. So I go up into my address bar and I type in forms.new and I could do this with sheets like sheets.new, slides.new, docs.new and it will generate a new whatever type of Google app you're trying to create. So um, one other quick tip is when you name your form you can click up here in the corner where it says untitled form and it will automatically populate that name right there if i want to save this into a particular folder i'm going to click on the folder and then my folders in my drive pop up so i'm actually working from my drive for my business because i didn't want to have a conflict with using my school's drive you also have a space to add in your description. So here I like to add in a video link. It will automatically make it an actual link that students can click on. And I like to allow my students to resubmit. So I leave directions for them to resubmit the form. And then here you can add in your question, whatever it's going to be. You can put in your options. If you're doing multiple choice, you can click here to change it to short answer or a paragraph, check boxes, a drop down file upload, which is one I haven't really used yet, but now it just kind of gave me an idea if I wanted students to show their work, I could have them upload a picture of it. You can get a linear scale, which is what I use on Friday surveys. You can do a multiple choice grid, checkbox grid. You can do the date, the time. You could also, if you have multiple choices, you can add in an other. So it will pop up and say other and students can type in their own response which I like to do when I do Friday surveys again. So I'll talk more about what they look like in a moment. You can click this button to duplicate if you want to have the same question pop up again. You can click the garbage can to get rid of it. And um, you can click this button here to require or not require the question. So if it's a practice, I require all of them. And if it's like a Friday survey, I don't require every question. I'm not going to go through every little function because it tells you what it is, but what I did want to point out is for multiple choice, if you want to add an image, the box pops up when you hover, and this is how I've been adding equations into my forms. Between the different options that are out there, and I'll link a video below where someone went through and shared what they are, I'd rather just type them out, take a screenshot, and then upload my own pictures instead of playing around with Equatio or anything else. Here you can customize the theme. So I've been going in like rainbow order, or actually I think it's a reverse rainbow order. So I'll go through my topics and we'll start um, using purple one day, then we'll switch it to blue, switch it to green, whatever. You can add your own custom colors in this way, which is fun. And what I'm really here to talk about is the settings. So you automatically see the general settings. I always check the box that says collect email addresses. My school formats student emails with their first and last name. So I just need their email and I know which response belongs to which student. I don't need to have them type in their first and last name, which I do see a lot of teachers doing. So really it just depends on your school. You can choose to do response receipts. And if you hover over the question mark, it tells you respondents receive a copy of their responses. This is something that I have not been using, but I might try it out this week because students will go through the form and they will keep resubmitting over and over and they're taking screenshots of what they're doing because they know that they have certain questions right, but they want to make sure that they don't get them wrong when they go to resubmit to have their do over. So I'm thinking maybe if I send them their response receipts, they won't need to do that and it might be a little bit easier on them. And then right here where it says requires sign in, restrict users in, and right now because I'm in my business email, it's coming up saying my business. But if it was my school district, my school district's name would be right here and it's trusted organizations. And I like to have this checked to ensure that students are logging in. And then you can limit to one response, which I don't like to do just in the nature of distance learning. I like to allow students to resubmit as many times as they want. And then under where it says respondents can, I like to click edit after submit because again, I like to let them resubmit. I have not done the summary charts and text responses. Presentation, I don't mess with. It automatically has a check to show link to submit another response, which I want students to be allowed to. So I leave that and I don't, I don't shuffle the question order or show progress bar. That part is up to you. What's really important is the quizzes section. So if I want to make this a quiz, I'm going to click here. And this is the part that I skip on my Friday surveys. So 
for any practice, I'm going to make it a quiz. And then the first option that you have is when it releases the grade. So anytime that I have the form set up and it's all multiple choice, I have the grades immediately released. And if it's not multiple choice and the short answer, then I have it set to later after manual review. And then they just warn you that this will automatically turn on email collection. And then here it's respondents can see missed questions. I always have that checked. I uncheck correct answers because if I'm going to allow students to resubmit, I'm not going to make it so easy where they're going to have the correct answers right away. And then there's point values. So I click save. And now when I go to my question, it pops up with this answer key option. So I click on whichever option is correct and I add a point value. So up here, it tells you how many total points there are. And right now it's just one because there's one question, but this is how I keep track of how many questions I have on my form. You could also select multiple answers if you have more than one correct answer. And then this feature is really cool. You can add answer feedback. So on correct answers, you could add in like great job or something that students get to see. For incorrect answers, you can add in like try again, or because it's math, I usually have specific feedback, like make sure you're using the formula correctly or something like that. You can also add links. So it could link to something, you could change what the text display looks like, and then you click add to add your link. You could also link directly to a YouTube video, which is fun. So if they get the incorrect answer and you have a short YouTube video that will help them with that question, you can send them directly there. And then once I click done, it shows me the question again. And usually what I do is I'll have one question set up and then click duplicate so that I can go through and I already have my answer key set so that it's worth one point and I can do whichever answer choice is correct. So it's up to you how many points you want each question to be worth. I've been sticking to one point, although for calculus, it would actually make sense to add multiple points per question. So I just changed these to short answer just to demonstrate something. When I'm ready to send my students this form, I go to send and I go to the link right here and then it gives me a link for the form, but I click shorten URL and then copy it. I also upload it into Google Classroom as an actual assignment, but this is what my form looks like. I'm just going to put in fake responses just to demonstrate what happens. So I have three totally fake responses and it's going to walk me through everything because I haven't done a form on here before, but I see a summary and I'm able to see how many points people earned. And right now I have it set on release the grades afterwards. So it doesn't really know how to grade anything yet because I did not put any correct answer in. I changed this into short answer text. So in my answer key, I can put in what the correct answer is here. And it could grade it that way. But the thing is, if you have short response, students can type in anything and it's hard to anticipate every different response that they can come up with. Even when I tell them, put your answer in this specific format, they still, they add a space here or they don't put a space there. And it just never totally works out like you think it would. So there's summary data that might be helpful. If a student turns a form in more than once, it puts a number after their email. They tell you the score is here. And right now it says score not released because I don't have anything scored yet. So I'll go to the question tab here and it shows me the different responses that we have and I can mark it either correct or incorrect. So if it's correct, the green check, and if it's incorrect, then the X. Then I click save at the bottom and I can arrow from up here or even down at the bottom and I can go on to the next question. And again, I just typed in random gobbledygook and none of this makes any sense. So I just click save. And then if I go back to the summary, I can see grades. So there's a grade of two out of two and a grade of zero out of two. And then it shows the scores here. Now I can release the scores by clicking here. And if I click send emails and release, it will send those scores out to those students. You can also add in a message. And the only thing I haven't shown yet is you can go to individual and under individual, it shows by email address, your students. So you can see their responses. You can also arrow through and you could skip to responses by using the numbers over here. You can even print responses or delete them as necessary. 
you can turn this off so it's no longer accepting responses. And the best part is you can create a spreadsheet. So generally I like to create a new spreadsheet. And so on the spreadsheet, you're getting the timestamp, the email address, which is where I would see my student names. You can see their score and the responses that they had to questions. So what I actually like to do is take that timestamp column, highlight it by clicking on the letter at the top. And when I get this menu to come up, I like to click hide column so that it's gone. And if I had anything longer in these columns and it was like a longer response, I would highlight the whole column and head up here to where it says text wrapping. So it's like the line of the arrow. And if I arrow down and I click the middle one, it's going to wrap the text. So if it's multiple lines of text, you don't have it getting hidden behind the column next to it. It wraps it so that the cell expands and you can actually read the full response. And then again, up here, you have the button with the folder. So you can take this spreadsheet and move it to wherever you like within your Google Drive. And the only thing that I really didn't discuss was my Friday surveys. I've been saving them to my highlights on Instagram, just all the questions that I'm asking students, but it's typically questions like, um, how are you doing? Which is very basic and I'll give them a text box. This week I gave them the linear scale. So I'll show what that looks like in the form. So my question was, how was your week? And I changed it to a linear scale. And so it's a scale from one to five. So I made five the highest and one the lowest. And so you can always go to this eye up here to see what this looks like. And this is how it projects to students. So how was your week? And then they can click whichever one makes the most sense. On the Friday surveys, I like to ask questions about online learning and get an idea of what student preferences are so that I can make decisions going forward that would benefit them. But I also like to ask for suggestions for our check-in questions, or I always add in a short answer response stating if there's anything that you want me to know about but I didn't ask a question for, please let me know here. And that's everything for this video. I actually went way more in depth than I was planning to and I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or any other tips for people using Google Forms, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.